and we are back actually wait no i skipped that that's my bad and we are back with the third segment of the gsmc basketball podcast presented by the gsmc sports network and in this third segment i'm going to go ahead and just give a quick recap of this game that's been going on right now and sort of you know who's been playing well who hasn't been playing well what's been working what hasn't been working so as of right now france is leading by a huge margin 45 to 29 was the halftime score and right now the score is 48 to 29 in favor of france and so far you know this this game has really not been close at all and it's it's really just been France just destroying the Canadian team. Now, for Canada, there aren't really... The only player that really stood out for me was Shagilgas Alexander. He was the one that's been really hitting all of these kinds of shots. Everyone else has sort of been very quiet in this game. I mean, let's go over the box scores. RJ Barrett, he's played the most minutes alongside anyone else aside from Shagilgas Alexander. But his production, he's only scored three points in this game and recorded two rebounds as well as three assists. Now, that is not enough for a team like the French. Like you really need to you really need to be competent enough to produce. And everyone's favorite hater, Dylan Brooks, everyone's favorite villain, whatever you want to call it, has been completely quiet throughout the entirety of this game. 0 for 6, 0 for 3 from 3, and he's done nothing but just brick every single shot here he has the ball and he almost turns it over but he doesn't but again this has just been incredibly disappointing from the canadian team who have like they've been dominant throughout a majority of the you know of their seedings right like we we've seen it before and we're seeing it like they've been they're flawless for a reason like they've been they've been flawless for a reason so the fact that they're losing to a an actual competitive team sort of makes it seem like these games have been a little bit i don't want to say yeah you know what i'm going to say it. they've been a little bit of a fluke because there is an argument that can be made that the group a phase was the weakest phase in the entire olympic standings i mean they didn't have the united states or serbia who and not to mention australia lost to serbia and they also didn't have the France, the French, or the German team. Like, they were going up against some bottom team, like some bottom feeding teams. They had Spain in their group. They had Greece in their group. They also had Australia in their group. And all, all of those teams are one and two, like, within the group standings. They didn't face any sort of legitimately good team. Meanwhile, France just made... or. Is that France or is that Canada? You yeah, know, that's France. It seems like they... Canada just... Lou Dort seemed to make an and one bucket at the basket. Okay, that's... That should be enough to... That, that's gonna... Then maybe that'll catalyst into something. But, you know, aside from the... Aside from that, this is like the first good team that Canada is playing against. And when you look at the competition between Group A and the rest of the tournaments this is it's not going to be an easy it's not going to be easy for the canadian team to advance if they continue to advance but as of right now this is it's just really it's not looking good it's really it's really not looking good and again like aside from dylan brooks not playing very well there's also you know dwight powell he's another player who hasn't even attempted a shot yet he's not playing well for the canadian team kelly olenic also not playing well for the team and who else who else did i notice that wasn't playing well i mean dort is he's doing all right and but france just keeps answering and answering and answering back like every single time canada gets a gets a bucket the french team answer right back and it's not just victor like so many other players on the french on the french team or the french team <laughs> so many players on the french team are playing at their best like they're really playing some very dominant basketball right now and one thing that i should note rudy gobert has been benched for a majority of this game and they have victor Wembenyama running the true you know the true center position so 
I, I believe this is sort of to match up with the Canadian team because the Canadian team has a lot of shooters. And if you were to put Rudy Gobert in that lineup against all of those shooters, meanwhile, as well having Victor Wembanyama, it would not only seem a little bit repetitive, but it also would affect your rotation and your ability to run towards the three-point area. Because Victor, while he is tall, he, he's quick on his feet. And being quick on your feet is really what you need in order to, you know, make rotations and rotate over to the three-point line whenever you need to because Canada has a lot of three-point shooters. Like, a lot of three-point shooters. Literally, their entire starting lineup can be a three-point shooting lineup. But so far, their shooting has not really been up to par with the France, with France's team. Meanwhile, R.J. Barrett makes an and one basket near the paint and goes to the line for one more. And now it seems like, you know, the Canadian team is about to fight. But then again, every single time Canada scores, the French team scores right back. But anyways, some of the top performers for France, again, not Victor Wimbanyama. As surprising to say, Victor has been very quiet in terms of scoring. He's 0 for 3 from the field, has 2 points. He's been double teamed a majority of the time he gets the ball. So he does have to make, he has to be more of a facilitator now. He has three assists, and he was also able to record three steals. Hasn't recorded a block yet, but, you know, the game is still young. And really, the scoring for the French team, has it's all been Isaiah Cordonier. Um, You guys probably don't know who he is. He's five for seven from the field and four for five from three. And then there's also Gershon Yabuseli. Again, forgive me if I completely botched those last names, but... He's, he has 14 points, 4 for 6 from the field, and 2 of 3 from 3. Now, these two players, they are having a ball game. They are playing their best basketball, and at the most important times ever. Now, oh, we have a kickball here, because Vic- Victor Wimbanyama literally c- cannot have a single minute of... He cannot have a single minute of just, you know, having the ball peacefully. But now he's... Victor just got benched, and Victor's on the bench, so now they're in, like, a really, they have a small lineup out there right now, but then again, not having Victor in the lineup, I guess, you know, any center is going to look small when looking at Victor. Dylan Brooks misses another layup once again, no surprise there. It really, I swear, Dylan Brooks, I can under, I understand why no one likes Dylan Brooks, because he talks so much, but he plays, like, I don't even know what he plays like, but he does. He talks the talk, but does he walk the walk? No, he doesn't. It's really annoying because it's like when you see someone that's talking, yet they have no like that. But it seems like they don't play nearly as well as what they're talking about. It's really annoying to me. I don't know if it's annoying to you guys as Shai Gilgis gets a bucket to make the score fifty to thirty nine in favor of France. Still, I mean, every single time Canada gets a bucket, France France answers back. But they're, France has sort of been getting a little bit dirty with the turnovers. Like, they're getting a lot more turnovers now. Shai is scoring a lot more now for the Canadian team. He's, he's got 17 points. He's leading the team in scoring. And he just got fouled. So, you know, this is sort of how the game has been going for the Canadian team. And this is, like, what's happening now what has been happening since the beginning of the second half. Now, the only difference is that France is getting a little bit sloppier. So, do they have a chance of coming back? Everyone has a chance of coming back in this tournament, but we'll see. But as of right now, that is, that'll be all for the third segment. So now I will go ahead and go into the fourth segment where I talk about why NBA players and why, you know, top basketball players cannot compete in the three-on-three basketball tournament in the Olympics because aside from having a five-on-five team, there's also a three-on-three team, and the United States recently lost in both of those categories. So I'll be right back after the short break explaining why. So be sure to stay tuned for that. For the best and latest podcasts available anywhere, go to the podcast app on your cell phone and type in GSMC to access free content-rich podcasts on health and wellness, book reviews, sports, entertainment, relationships, social media, movies, technology, finance, and even weird news. Subscribe and download the GSMC Podcast Network's family of shows. 
available everywhere podcasts are found.